Mr. Kealoha. Aloha Kako, Aloha um, Madam Hearings Officer, and Mr. Hayes, and everyone. Good morning. Um, Mr. Hayes, I had a question about much of the terminology used to describe areas on the Mauna Summit. I believe you said you were using our words to describe um, the mountain. Do you remember that? When Kealoha was, Aloha, was um, pointing the map out to you in her cross-examin? I don't, I don't recall. Our words? Yes. Who is the R? Well, you said it, so I'm asking you, do you recall saying that? Not specifically, no. Okay. Um, you were talking about an area E. Do you remember that? I know area E. Okay. Where is this area E on the summit, the real name of the place? I, I'm very confused. Is this where the TMT is to be built if the permit passes? Yes. And where is this? Area E is in the northern plateau area. Northern plateau. Are these, are these words you use to describe the Mauna again? They're words that have been used in uh, past documentation related to the, the summit area. As a multi-generational descendant of, of this land and that includes the Mauna, I'm very unfamiliar with these terms. So who uses these terms that you're talking about? Where is this area E? The area E was originally uh, denoted in the 2000 master plan. Are you not aware of, of the names of these areas? Who labeled it Area E? There's two questions. Are you not aware of the names of these areas? The names given by who? The original names of these areas. Uh, the, I, I don't know exactly what areas you're referring to. Pu'u keone he Are you aware of that? Can, can you spell that for me, please? P-U-U, that's one word. Yes. I should give you the diet criticals. P-U-O-K-I-N-A-U. Um, the second word is K-O-N-E-H-E-E, which is K-E-O-N-E-H-E-H-E-O-K-I-N-A-E. Thank you very much. Are you, um, did you say no? That you're not aware of Pu'u Keonehehe? Well, there are many named Pu'u on Mauna Kea. Um, I'm not aware of that specific one. I believe it's in the viewing plane, at least, of the TMT. Um, are you aware of Pu'u Lilinoi and Pu'u Kukahaula? Yes. Okay. Where is this in your terminology? What, is, what do you call those? Their names. So where is Area E in relation to Pu'u Lilinoi, Kukahaula, and, well, you don't know where Pu'u Kionehe is, so. Those Area E is to the north, northwest. So would you say that's the plane you're talking about? Um, the plane I'm talking about is the area to the north. We call it the northern plateau. Uh, because it is on the north side of Mauna Kea. Where is the northwestern, what you call the north, northwestern plateau in relation to Pu'u Lilinoi and Pu'u Kukau? 
I called it the Northern Plateau, oh, and I said it is to the north, north west of Pu'u Lilinoi. And again, you don't know. Just a second. Where did you get this terminology, Area E, from? You said other people have used it. What other people and where did you get it from? As I said earlier, from the 2000 Master Plan. And who's the author of that? The University of Hawaii. Is this the Mauna Kea Management Plan? Is that different? Uh, I'd have to look up the exact name, uh, but it's commonly referred to as the 2000 Master Plan. You say the University of Hawaii authored it or did they commission it? I believe a consultant prepared it. Would that be um, Cultural yeah. Surveys of Hawaii? Excuse me? Would that be Cultural Surveys of Hawaii? I don't know. Are you familiar with it? any of the other original names of the areas. Where is, you also mentioned, I think, a section F, uh, area Yeloha. F. It would help if you asked a question, stop, let him answer. Sorry. That's okay, no, yeah. no apology, I'm just letting you know. She went. So you asked him if he was familiar with any of the other? Yeah, I'm gonna retract that. You, did you also describe an area F? Thank you. I believe Area F may appear on certain figures in the environmental impact statement. Okay. Uh, one more time. Where is Area E and where is Area F, according to you? Um, I'm very confused because these terminology is not familiar to me. On figure 2-3 of exhibit A3, uh, it illustrates the locations of Area E and Area F. Could you describe those locations? Or if you want to use the projector, I'm sure that's fine. Thank you. So Area E, as I've explained, is to the north-northwest over here. Excuse me, but could you please, uh, for the record, identify what you have now put on the projector? Yeah, again, this is a figure 2-3 from exhibit A3. And area E is to the north, northwest of Kukuhaula and Pu'ulilinoi, which is actually off the figure. And area F, is this area that's more directly north of Pu'u Kukuhaula. And you said you use these terminologies because of the 2002 or master plan, is that right? The 2000 master plan. Um, but you don't know who authored that master plan? Hold on a moment. This is uh, page 2-35 from Exhibit A3, and we reference the Mauna Kea Science Reserve Master Plan prepared by Group 70 International and adopted by the UH Board of Regents. Were you directed to use these terminologies from that master plan, or were you directed to? Uh, direct, uh, not directed, no. Did, but you, did you choose to use the terminology from the master plan? Yes. Okay, why did you choose to use that terminology in particular? The master plan was the most recent planning document prepared for the area being considered. This is the first time I'm hearing these terminologies and it concerns me greatly. Are you aware of the concept of erasure? Of what? Erasure. No. Um, is it common practice? 
did you vet the facts in this um, man, um, excuse me did you vet the facts in this Mauna Kea management plan I reviewed the Mauna Kea Science Reserve Master Plan. Sir, it would help if you listen to his question okay. and answer. Sorry. Did you vet the facts? Uh, I don't know. In your um, work, what guides your fulfillment? of the regulations for environmental impact statements? My work is uh, regulated by the acceptance of the final EIS by the governor of Hawaii. And there are specific statutes that it involves, is that correct? Or um, requirements? Yes. Sorry. Um, are any of them to vet the facts of a document that you're using for your assessment? Do any of them apply to that? Do any of the guidelines apply to vetting the facts of documents you use in your assessment? No. So there, would you agree that there is no protection from unfactual things being included in your assessment? I think that'd be a stretch. I mean, we, of I course, review the information and evaluate whether it's generally accurate, but if a document such as the 2000 Master Plan has been accepted by the UH Board of Regents, we're going to accept it as generally being factual without having to vet it at a, a extreme level. So are you asserting that the names of these areas is in fact Area E and in fact Area F? Those terms Area E and Area F are just to make it easy to identify an area, but they are not given names. I don't find it easy at all, but I thank you for your answer. Why would you not use the correct names of these areas instead of coming and feeling entitled to rename it? Please do not answer, Mr. Louis Kwan. It assumes facts, not in evidence. Correct. Um, I'm going to overrule that objection. Please answer. There were no comments received uh, indicating that there were other names that should be used as a part of our preparation of the document. In cultural assessment and cultural preservation, wouldn't it be important to rely on more than one document for this information? Objection. He's not being called as a cultural expert. He's a preparer of the EIS. I can I respond? Yes. I believe the environmental impact statement regulations require you to take into account a cultural impact assessment. Is that not correct? Please answer. Yes, we consider Your answer culture. is yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Kilo, your next question. Just a second. Um, so would you answer that question I asked a second ago? Could you read back to the question I asked before the objection, please, ma'am? I think it was why would you, and then I just want to get the exact wording. Thank you. Question, in the cultural assessment and cultural preservation, wouldn't it be important to rely on more than one document with this information? Yes. Is there a reason why you, oh, okay, wait. Did you look at other documents for these, for these names like area E and area F? Yes. And what other documents would you say um, you looked at that confirmed this? Confirmed what? That these are actually the names of the areas you're speaking of. As I've said, uh, Area E and Area F are not given names. They are, look, they are 
just a spot on a map in a master plan. It's not a given name that would appear. Excuse me, sir. I think he was asking you if you referred to any other documents. Was that your question? Yes. Yes, and he said yes. Right? Or am I wrong? We looked at many documents to evaluate names of places. And, and then I think I asked you, did they confirm the... Um, So area, area, e, e, area, F. area E is uh, discussed in detail in the 2000 master plan. That's the one. Uh, it also appears in the final EIS prepared for the Outriggers Telescope Project. And Just a second. And where did they get that information from? Where did, excuse me? Where did they get that name and information from? The where did who? That last um, Outrigger. EIS that you're talking about, did they refer to the master plan as well, or did the name come from somewhere? I assume they took it from the 2000 master plan. So it's the same source. So you're giving me a reference of a source for the same source. So are there any other references used? That was my question. There were other references used. However, the 2000 master plan is the one that created the concept of an area E. Okay, are you aware of the concept of academic inbreeding? No. How do you, do you consider a reference referencing the same single reference vetting facts? I don't know. Do you consider? I don't understand your question. Okay, the outrigger EIS you said referenced also. Yes, that indicated that that name, that not name, but that designation of Area E has been relied on by multiple parties. But then you also stated that they also got the name from the same exact source of the Mauna Kea management plan? Yes, most likely. So you did not give me a different reference. You, you gave me a reference that referenced the same reference. Is that correct? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. So did you, in fact, use any other references that didn't refer to the Mauna Kea management plan to, conf to vet the fact that these are the names of the area? Again, Area E is not a name of an area that would appear on a map. It's only for the planning process. You said during Kealoha's cross-exam that these are the names we use for the mountain. So I'm confused now. Now they're not names? Maybe names is the wrong word, and if, I, if that's the concept or the, the connotation, I apologize. However, these are... These are designations of an area, but they would not appear on a road map or a public map. They are part of the planning process for the University of Hawaii alone. Why don't you use the original names of the area? Why do you choose instead? Uh, let, let me answer oh. the question, please. The original names of the area cover a much broader area, and we did not want to um, have people have the notion that a much broader area was under consideration. It was important to focus on a specific area so that people could see what that was and give it a label other than uh, a, a given name that would be covering a larger area. Were these areas rezoned in some way that you needed to do that? No. In a cultural assessment, that concerns me. How can you culturally assess something that you've changed the name to and the area to fit another need? That is 
Does that make sense? How could you culturally assess something that is already culturally set, then come, chop it up like you just said, and rename it? Can I answer? I'm going to object. This, this is all argument, Judge. Yeah, Mr. Kilo, and it, that kind of misstates what this witness said. He wasn't carving up what exists. He was using a designation, Area E, to describe the area he was doing his work on. Okay. That's what I heard, but so I, I don't think he was trying to recreate certainly the, the area's names. In a cultural assessment, is it appropriate to not use the cultural names of, of these lands in your assessment? It, is, it would not be appropriate. In a cultural assessment, it's not appropriate. Okay, let me restate what, what I think you heard, and please tell me if I'm correct. You're saying it is not appropriate to use the cultural names in a cultural assessment for assessing I the believe, culture. I believe the original question you asked was worded differently, uh, but it is appropriate, it is appropriate to use the given names of an area when performing a cultural assessment and that was done. And you're very sure you're not familiar with the term I'm trying to assess the measure. I'm not familiar, it may appear on some maps, uh, but I'm not familiar with it being in close proximity okay. or. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, how much, I'll ask you the question that I think might be more appropriate for you than when Mr. White was up there. But how much weight and value does the cultural assessment have within the environmental impact statement for your recommendation? The cultural impact assessment informed uh, a portion of the evaluation in the environmental impact statement related to uh, cultural practices and beliefs. When you say a portion, is it erroneous or is there guidelines? Are there guidelines? Are there guidelines to what? The portion that you said it's a portion of, of, of weight of your assessment and your recommendation. Are there guidelines for this portion? The guidelines of preparing an environmental impact statement are in uh, HRS chapter 343, HAR. The portion I'm talking about is the cultural impact assessments portion and weight in your assessment and recommendation. What's the guideline for that? There is no specific guideline. Would you say it's erroneous? No. Then uh, if it's not specific and it's not erroneous, what are you saying? I'm trying to understand because that's important to me, the cultural impact in your assessment. The information in the cultural impact assessment is considered and informs the evaluation respective of the requirements of the EIS. Are there any regulations or guidelines as to the weight of any of the assessments in your, and I'm talking about legal, uh, so statutes or regulations that require you to weigh any of this a certain way or percentage of your assessment and recommendation. Are you asking specific to cultural impact assessments? I'm asking for the whole assessment, not just cultural, because you already said there's no specific, no erroneous, which is very confusing, but are there any guidelines the uh, chapter 343, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> requirements uh, specifically indicate when you are evaluating visual impacts that you uh, review general plans prepared by the counties. That's one example of. Plans prepared by the county are your 
is one example of how you weigh your decision. Is that what you're saying? There are significance criteria and there are 13 significance criteria in the environmental impact statement regulations. Okay. Specifically, do any of them apply to the cultural impact assessment and its weight in your recommendation? There's no specific language in the regulations requiring a certain percentage. Would you say it was up to your prerogative? Yes. Where are you from? Where was I? What? Where are you from? What is your culture? Like where was I born or what? Or? Sure, yeah. Start there. Just a minute, please. <laughs> Mr. Louis Kwan. I'm going to object. I'm going to object and ask for an offer of proof. Where is this meeting, Mr. Kilo, huh? The cultural impact assessment is supposed to influence the environmental impact statement and the recommendation in general. And I, I am uh, pretty much exposing the fact that it's erroneous and up, up to his prerogative. And, and I'd like to further example where that um, recommendation might have come from, being that it's not guided by regulation. And why does that have to, what does that have to do with where this witness is from? Because if there's no regulations and guidelines, and it's, like he said, it's up to his prerogative, I'm going to assume that he, and ask him, after I've asked him where he's from, if those are the values he assessed this um, recommendation by. Is that not relevant? I can you, can, you, you can ask him what he bases his prerogative on. Oh, okay. Would that be okay? Thank you, yes. All right, go ahead. Thank you for, guid thank you for your guidance. Um, what do you base your prerogative on? So there was more than just myself. There was a team of people involved in preparing the environmental impact statement. And as I've said, we drew heavily from the information uh, provided as part of the cultural impact assessment to evaluate uh, the criteria for uh, certainly that section that's prepared for cultural practices and beliefs. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with the assessment on culture? Who was responsible for that on your team? Oh, I'm sorry if you did. I can. He's just an objection. Um, so he's objecting to ask and answered. But if, if that hasn't been covered before, you can tell me, Mr. Kimmel. I have not heard it, and I tried to look and make sure I didn't repeat anything. But when has it been covered before, Mr. Lucan? I believe Mr. Hayes provided a list of names when he was asked many times who assisted him in the, in, in the assessment of the EIS. He gave names to the extent he could remember, recall. There were several names of people that he gave, and I think we went through this a number of times. Do you remember that, Mr. Kilo? Um, yes, but I don't recall specifically the person who was in, or persons who were in charge of um, discerning the cultural impact in the, in the whole picture of the environmental impact statement. Like you said, he says there's a team, there's just people, but who are these experts that um, assess my culture? Is that the same team you've identified before, Mr. Hayes? Yes. So he's already answered that. So you're gonna say the whole team had input on, on my cultural assessment, is that right? 
Uh, there's in the, uh, I believe it's chapter six, there's the list of the people and yes, everybody, well not everybody in that chapter, but a number of people. Um, were any of them cultural practitioners? Hawaiian cultural practitioners? Hawaii, I should say, cultural practitioners. No. Is that um, standard operating procedure to have a, a no cultural experts assessing my culture in your um, field? We had, uh, as I said, a number of people involved and included the uh, interviews and their viewpoint on what the impact would be. Is this the 160 or so people you've, you folks um, got um, feedback from? I, I didn't understand the question. Um, are these the 160 or so people I think you mentioned earlier that submitted input for this? Did you mention earlier that you folks got feedback from the community? I, I don't remember, but we, um, in the cultural impact assessment, they were attempted to contact 60 different oh, 60. groups or individuals. Uh, 25 of those responded, uh, and certain groups, certain subset of that okay. was interviewed. Is this the group that Mr. Uncle Kuching was a part of? Yes. Okay, who else was part of that group? It's that evaluated my culture. Do, that you have, do you have it in the document that you can refer yeah. to a page? Maybe that would be more helpful. It's in exhibit A5, which is the cultural impact assessment included as an appendix. So of these 60, only 25 responded, you said. Yeah, I have my notes here. Uh, let's see. There were, let's see, 14, 18 people interviewed as part of the cultural impact assessment. Were any of those 18 people, besides Uncle Kuching, a person that is here as a party? That is here what? Oh. As, as a petitioner? I uh, included Kealoha Pishkiota. Okay, so anybody else? I'm sorry, who is that? Kealoha Pishkiota. Oh, all right, thank you. Um, anyone else? I don't think so. How was the input solicited? As I said, uh, there were attempts to contact 60 parties or individuals. And were, they, were they handpicked? How were they solicited? They were selected by Cultural Surveys Hawaii. Is this also part of the master plan or part of your assessment alone? I mean, your um, environmental impact statement process alone? It was part of the 30 meter telescopes assessment alone. Okay, there was a selected by Cultural Service Hawaii. How did, they, do you know how Cultural Service Hawaii went around soliciting them or decided who they would ask? No. Are you, can you affirm whether there was a public notice put out or not? There were many public notices related to the environmental impact statement. Just in particular for this solicitation of um, input. I'm not aware of a public announcement, but they did ask uh, the State Historic Preservation Division and they consulted OHA and the people generally, the practices when they do get in contact with one person, they ask them, are there other people you think we should speak with? Mr. Kilo, how much longer do you think you might have? I, I can wrap it up. Um, uh, you, I'm, just, I'm just going with my notes. Um, I'm depends. giving you latitude because oh. I know this is the area that you're focused on, yeah. which is the cultural 
uh, issues. And so I'm happy to give you more time if you need it. I just wanted to ask how much more time do you think 10 you need? 10.30, 10.35, 10 so you need about minutes. 15 more minutes. 10 or 15 minutes. All right, wrap Maybe it up less. in 15 minutes. Okay. Okay, thank you for clearing that up somewhat. Are you familiar with the terms and cultural practice and concepts of, I should ask you first, do you speak any Hawaiian or understand any Hawaiian language? Very, very little. Yeah. Has the term ola naivi and cultural practice and custom of that come up? Ola naivi, and that's O-L-A, N-A, I-W-I. No. How about my kaula iwale ikaivi o na kupuna? Does that ring a bell? I've heard those words, but I don't know the exact meaning. It never came up in the cultural discussions and the assessment of my culture? I don't know. Were you there assessing my culture with the team when they did this? I was not present during the interviews. What was your part in the assessment then, in, in this team? Uh, my part was to uh, evaluate the impact of the project relative to the significance criteria. I'm very surprised. Um, do you recall when Mr. Fergustrom stated on another day, I think he was um, cross-examining Mr. White. Were you here every day for Mr. White's cross-exam? I think so. Do you recall Mr. Fergustrom stating that you're building on his kupuna? Do you recall that statement? Something along that line. I don't remember the yeah, exact yeah. statement. Okay. Well, what, how do you interpret that? You are building on my kupuna when somebody says that. Based on information that we've heard uh, or inf statements by cultural practitioners, the uh, disturbance or the, the mountain itself is considered a descendant or they are a descendant of a mountain. And you still insist to use terms area E and F instead of the real names? Objection, argument. Oh. Sustain. So you, you know this is a cultural concept in my culture? In some people's, yes. You say some. Does that mean yet? Is that, is that to um, minimize the amount? No, I, I don't know your culture, your individual culture. Cultures, the culture I'm talking about is collective, just to clarify. So when you say some, what, what, what do you mean by that terminology? Again, I don't know what culture you're referring to. You don't know what culture I'm referring to. I, I understood thank you. from... No, thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Kealoha.